If you're homeschooling a high schooler or maybe a middle schooler, you may be wondering what is the best writing grammar program out there to help your student learn to effectively communicate their ideas, to teach them to think critically, or to teach them to debate their idea well. On my channel, I have talked about homeschooling in middle school and high school with our children and how these years especially are so important. These are our last years. We need to make them count. We have a short time left before our kids go out into the real world and they need to be equipped with truth and discernment. But how do we teach them to apply this knowledge practically? Do they know how to communicate? In my next two videos, yes, I said two, because there was so much to share in one video, I just had to break it down into two. I'm gonna share with you about two of my favorite writing programs, the Institute for Excellence in Writing and the Lost Tools of Writing. Now in this first video, I'm going to talk about the cost of both and what comes with that cost. I'm also going to talk about the goals for each of them because in my opinion, the goals are a little bit different. And then in this first video, I'm going to go through the details of how the IEW, the Institute for Excellence in Writing program works. And in the next video, I will talk about the lost tools of writing and the details of that and how it works. Here's a secret for you. I love both of these programs so much that I am actually wondering if I should go back to them for a refresher for high school. Should I abandon the good and the beautiful? Maybe for one year. That's another video. No, really, it's another video and it's coming. We're gonna talk about that too. See that back there? Those are all things that I'm going to tell you about. I have been homeschooling for six years. My name is Rachel, and I have tried a lot of curriculum, and I definitely have my favorites. I can't talk enough about how really great both of these writing courses are, so I just want to just get right down to it and tell you the nitty gritty of each. I did both of them through classical conversations, so that is where my perspective is coming from. Now, if you are not part of Classical Conversations, this is not a CC curriculum at all. This is something that they found to be excellent, so they just incorporated it into theirs. Why reinvent the wheel if the wheel already works perfectly? In Classical Conversations, they start teaching this as young as fourth grade. This is the basic teacher's manual that you need the teaching, writing style, and structure. And in here, it really shows you how you could even start incorporating some of this as young as first grade. If you're part of the Essentials Program for Classical Conversations, part of your tuition that you pay is some of this instruction that comes for IEW, and that is the DVDs. You, as a mom, would have access to all of those DVDs through your Classical Conversations community. If you're not part of CC, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you get those DVDs. It is going to be a large expense up front, but first of all, Andrew Poudoua, who is the writer of this course, he is an excellent presenter. He's very entertaining to watch. He's very engaging, and he will literally teach you how to teach this to your children. So this is like the main tool for writing. You really don't need anything else to teach your kids than this teaching writing structure and style manual. And if you purchase this manual, there will be a code in here where you can print off writing assignments for your children and just print it yourself. They also have a lot of themed writing courses. So I have here the US history-based writing course. Now I have teacher's manual and the student manual, and I will give you a little peek inside both of these. These themed writing courses are usually, if you get both the teacher's manual and the student manual, they are about $50. Now, after you've done the course once, and actually after you're comfortable doing the course, I'm not sure if I would use the teacher's manual or not. I think that I can get by with just the student manual and then this is going to remind you of the ins and outs of each unit. 
And then with each writing course, I think this is downloadable from this, but it definitely you have a code to download it from the themed courses. And this is what's called a student resource packet. And I'm gonna show you inside this. This is an invaluable tool. My son has used this from fourth grade. He's a freshman. He is still going to be using this because this thing is magical. And inside each themed course, these are vocabulary words. So if you wanna add additional vocabulary to your students' homeschool curriculum, then you can add that from the IEW themed courses. Throughout the writing assignments, it will challenge you to add vocab words. And many of these vocab words, they're strategically chosen to go along with the theme. So for example, resolutely, nobly, this history themed based was medieval. So nobly, intrigue, extol, rebuke. I mean, you could really use them for any. So retreat, there's a little picture there to remind you what it is. A very simple definition to withdraw a sentence for how they could use it in context. So that's kind of like, I would say the basics of what you would need to start with the Institute for Excellence in Writing. Lost Tools of Writing, it's a different company. This is from the Cirque Institute, and this is the Lost Tools for Writing One pack, teacher's manual and student guide. This is quite expensive. I, I think both of these together were $150, but here's the thing. In classical conversations, they start this program in seventh grade, and they do the first half of this book in seventh grade. And then in eighth grade, they do the second half of the book. And then in ninth grade, they do the whole book. And actually, for how this course is written, bet you that they don't really do the <laughs> front of it because this builds on itself every single unit. And I will show you more about that. This is so good for teaching your children how to think. So am I telling you that Institute for Excellence in Writing does not teach your children how to think? That is not what I'm saying, but they kind of have different goals, let's put it that way. So Institute for Excellence in Writing focuses a lot more on grammar and style of writing, like adding really descriptive adverbs and sentence openers and how to write a really great title for your paper. It goes through nine units of different kinds of papers, which I will show you. Whereas Lost Tools of Writing is really more focused on persuasive writing, being able to debate a topic, understanding how to defend your point of view, and how to come up with a point of view. So kind of the main differences and why Classical Conversations uses this fourth through sixth grade to teach them the process of writing, but then they switch over to this to, okay, let's come up with some original thoughts now and under, start understanding how to defend your point of view. I love this. My son, he will be incorporating what he has learned from this program and this program into whatever he writes for his language arts papers. Now let me show you the inside of and explain very specifically how each one works. Okay, so this is my main teacher's guide in every one. There's free downloadable codes for every single unit. There's a tab here. So the very first unit that they go over, and I mentioned nine, right? Yep, nine. The very first unit they go over is note making and outlines and it's super simple because what IEW stresses is you start with easy and then you add one. Easy plus one. They start out super easy and that's why you can start this at very young ages. But here's where I'm telling you, adjusting for grade level. Grade one, grade two and three, grade four and up, middle school and high school. So you can take any of these assignments and tailor it for your grade. So if you were trying to do family style, I wonder, <laughs> I just wonder 
how you could do this and have them all write something on the same topic. In this particular one, they give you student samples here. So what they're gonna teach you in unit one, like again, this is the generic stuff, not the themed, but and in the DVDs, this is exactly what he goes over in the DVDs. So you can follow along with each unit for each DVD. He's gonna go over, you're gonna have a paragraph and you're gonna teach your student how to make a keyword outline. So there's a topic sentence line here and then six additional outline points. You have a topic sentence here, book lice are tiny insects that eat mold and mildew. What he's gonna go through is say, pick three keywords to put on here. You can use three words only. You can use as many symbols, numbers, pictures, but you can use as many of those as you want, but only three words. And it's going to teach the children when they go back, they're going to write from this outline and it's teaching them to rewrite it in their own words. So this is the easy part and they build upon this on every single unit. Every other unit, they give you the source text that you are creating your keyword outline from. So unit one, you're literally just writing an outline and that's it. Unit two, you're writing your paper from that outline. Okay, so then unit three, retelling narrative stories. So then this is a little bit more creative writing. This is, you're looking at who's in the story, what are they like, when does it happen? You're coming up with your own idea to retell this narrative. It's a little bit more creative, not necessarily word for word. Summarizing a reference is kind of the same outline form as before, except for it, you're getting a lot more information and you're having to filter it down, narrowing it to just six or seven facts. So we talk about that for unit four. Um, unit five is a fun one. It is writing from pictures. This is where if you have a creative one, this is all creative, all of it. Pictures, you're literally deciding what your central fact is of this picture to write a story. And it goes through the process for how to do that. Unit six is summarizing multiple references. So now they're, they're getting their keyword outlines here from multiple texts and then creating one outline from those three texts. This is all building to a bigger paper at the end of all of these units, but it's teaching them a process. So in this book, they have little mini booklets about elephants and teaching them how to pick topics from multiple texts. Unit seven is inventive writing. Again, this is all from your brain. You get to pick a topic that you're interested in and write about it. Unit eight, formal essay models. So like I said, everything before is kind of funneling us into this bigger research paper, term paper idea, formal essay model. So we've just taken the outlines, the keyword outlines that we've learned using references and multiple texts. And now we're just adding a little bit more, easy plus one. And then unit nine is a formal critique. So for fourth through sixth graders, this is a really challenging topic. They do say you can adjust for grades four and five. Obviously first and second, third grade are not here for a reason because a formal critique of a literary work is hard. So it's more for the upper grades. I want to show you the themed writing and then I want to show you the student resource pack. These are identical inside, except for this obviously gives the student room to work. And I believe that they will allow you to make copies if you have multiple children that are working out of the same book. So you can copy this within a family. But as you can see here, my son just went through and he underlined the interesting sentences that he wanted to include in his keyword outline. And then over here we practiced just three words and pictures and symbols. And then he had to write his paper from that. Now the teacher's manual has ideas here for you. So especially like your first year of teaching this, this is very handy to have to help give your child some direction. Let me start from the beginning here because I want to point out some things. These are all the topics for the American history. So for, for lesson one, they would be writing about Christopher Columbus. When they're actually writing their paper, they would practice the outline using a text, The Lost Colony. For lesson three, Jamestown. For lesson four, 
the Mayflower mishap, so on and so forth. It gives you an idea for suggested um, schedule here. And then here's the scope and sequence. So this is over 30 weeks that they have all of these lessons planned out. It tells you for week one what unit you're doing, what the topic is, what style technique you may be teaching, the vocabulary words for that week. And if you want to add on read-alouds, there are suggested read-alouds or assigned reading if you would rather do that. But for the U.S. history, the Witch of Blackbird Pond, Johnny Tremaine, the Sign of the Beaver, so on and so forth. And they kind of go along with that part of history. So that's kind of cool. So for week one, it's telling you for each day what your assignment is, which you know as a mom, having it all laid out for you is so nice mama's got decision fatigue sometimes i just want you to tell me what the plan is and then i will stray from the plan if i want to but i need a place to start so part of the teacher's manual in this gray area is ideas for how you could teach the lesson so right here you can see there's an ly adverb game and it will explain how you could do the game so those are kind of fun the white part is what is in the student's notebook the gray part is what is additional for teacher? They have these little practices every week for practicing something that you've learned about, mostly the style. And at the end of every lesson, there's place to practice your vocab words and there is a checklist. These are so valuable. And by the end of the book, when you've got through it all, I mean the checklist, let me just find, this is just unit six checklist. You can see how much larger it is. It starts out very, very small because it's easy plus one, and we're ending here, but you can see there are multiple paragraphs. So there's multiple boxes to do. Make sure you have these kind of openers, a subject opener in both your first paragraph and your second paragraph, a prepositional opener in both your first paragraph and your second paragraph, and then you as teacher can assign points if they did that on their final draft. And then there's extra credit if they add vocab words. This sort of systematic approach to writing is wonderful because they are literally repeating the same process over and over and over again. They're learning about what makes a good paragraph. Anyway, just so much goodness. I could, I could literally talk about this program for an hour, but you don't want that. You should look into it yourself. But let me really quickly tell you about the student resource packet that is downloadable. So I took this to Staples because I have a discount at Staples where I can have this printed for one to two cents a page if it's um, black and white only. So that's what I did. So this cost me two to four dollars to have it printed and then spiral bound. And then I added these tabs and we, this thing is probably four years old. Four years old, there you go. Okay, so this is called the Student Resource Pack because it does summarize every unit here. So if you don't buy the themed writing, this Student Resource Pack, which is downloadable from that teacher's structure and style manual, and it kind of allows them to follow along from here if you wanted to teach it that way. But at the end of here is where I'm telling you all the goodness is. Okay, so at the end here I have dress ups and word lists. L-Y adverbs. So one of the things those checklists stress is make sure you have at least one L-Y adverb in every paragraph because this just makes the writing so much better. Again, I can't make this video too long and teach all of this to you, but I'm just telling you. Avoiding, there's banned words, so you never use the word really or very in your sentences. So if they have this in your paragraph, in their first draft, mama would circle it and say, nope, that's a banned word, and they could come back here and say, okay, instead of really, I will say absolutely or completely. And it just helps them use a broader vocabulary. And then your who, which clauses. Make sure you have one of those per paragraph. Do not use say or said in your writing. Use suggested or voiced or whispered. Do not use go or went. Use creeped or followed. So you get the idea. It's just really teaching them to dress up. Just like you might put on jewelry if you're on your way to a wedding to make an outfit your own style. That's kind of what this is about papers. No using the word good. 
depending on what you're using good for, here are examples of words. And then you can add your own, the student can add their own as they think of more words. And then this notebook literally becomes their own personal style. So here is ideas for sentence openers, prepositional list, ideas for prepositional openers, and these are called number two because they are the second opener that this program teaches adverb openers, and then other sorts of decorations. Later it teaches about alliteration, using similes and metaphors in your writing, dramatic openers, very short sentences. Peter sighed. Peter had an idea. Those would be very short sentences and they're powerful. If you have like super, super long sentence and then a really short sentence, sometimes that short sentence has the most impact. Okay, so you get the idea. This is awesome for the process of writing. For more insight into curriculum for these high school and upper grades, check out this video. And until next time, bye.